Backspacing. What is backspacing? This is something which I had to get my head around a bit. When you buy a telescope for astrophotography, you don't just buy the telescope, you also then have to buy a flattener to make the image flat or the field of view flat. Now this is a flattener and reducer built in. You can see it says reducer flattener and this is a 0.8 which means that whatever the focal length is of your scope, you times it by 0.8 and this creates a new focal length. So in essence, it gives you a wider field of view because it shortens the focal length. So if I was to take a 715 millimeter and then times it by 0.8, it would create a 572 millimeter focal length telescope with this flattener. And you can also have the same again, but with a 0.1 flattener. So basically this keeps the native focal length of your telescope. So if it was again 715 times by 1 is 715. So that basically gives you the same focal length. Now why would you want to do that? Why would you want to put a reducer with a different uh, focal length on? Well the truth is it speeds up your telescope and increases your field of view. So if you had um, an f7 telescope with this it would become around sort of an f5 f6 telescope depending on the aperture of the telescope and that's really good because it increases the speed with which light can be gathered but the thing that you need to know is the distance between the telescope that fits on the end of the flattener here which is this one and then all your gubbins filters and then eventually your camera that goes on the back now when you buy these, they should tell you what the backspacing between the end of the flattener and the camera sensor. Now there seems to be a kind of magic number of 55 millimeters. Now that's not always the case, but on the whole, from what I've looked briefly online, if you can create 55 millimeters from the back of your flattener to the camera sensor, then all of the stars are going to be pinpoint accurate, particularly on the edges. So how do you create that? There is a method that I use and um, it's different for every camera. So I've got an Altair cooled camera here and I've also got an SV Boney cooled camera here. Now on this camera, from where the thread is on this part here to the sensor, I've written it down it is 17.5 millimeters. So the first bit is 17.5 millimeters. Then typically in my imaging chain, I put a filter draw. So this here is a filter draw, this bit here, and that would be the next bit. So this bit screws onto there. So I've got 17.5 on the camera. This filter section here is 17 millimeters again. And then I have to add those up and work out how many additional spaces I need for this coma corrector. So I've got a coma corrector on there, which you can see. So that's the coma corrector for a Newtonian scope. And again, this has a 55 millimeter backspacing from the coma corrector to the camera itself, the actual camera sensor. So I have 17.5 plus 17.5, which gives me 34. 0.5 millimeters. So that's just from the camera sensor to the end of the filter draw there. And then I have to take that away. So 55 minus 34.5. That gives me 20.5. So I then have to add up 20.5 millimeters. And you can see here I have a 15.5 millimeter and a five millimeter, which adds up exactly to 20.5 millimeters. So in total, with this camera and this image chain, I have exactly 55 millimeters. So I'm going to go through exactly the same exercise again. Now this particular camera has a different sensor position compared to this camera, as exactly you'd expect. They're completely different cameras. Now this camera, I've written down the notes, it says 6.5 millimeters from the front here to the camera sensor. And then also there is an 11 millimeter 
screw fixing here, which I'm going to add together. So 6.5 plus 11, so that's 17.5. So although it's a different camera, it actually has the same spacing now. So luckily, it's exactly the same maths. I've got 17 millimeters from the filter drawer. I've then got 15.5 here from this spacer. And then I've got five millimeters from this spacer. And when you add all of that together, you get exactly 55 millimeters. Now, it's actually really quite difficult with these to know exactly where the sensor positioning is. And um, we're very lucky with this particular camera and with this particular camera that the manufacturers actually give you the positioning of the sensor, the camera sensor. And that information is absolutely valuable. But it's fair to say that not every flattener has that golden 55 millimeter requirement or not every coma corrector has that golden 55 millimeter correction because they're not perfect. They're not, they, they have optical um, errors as well. And quite often you'll end up with a collection of different extensions just to tweak the backspacing on these cameras. And when you buy a camera, so this is the one that came with the SV Boney one, it actually comes with a huge array of different spaces. And even some of these, these are tiny shims to put in, which um, can change the back focus by fractions of a millimeter. So uh, in really small distances, I think there are four teeny tiny shims in here to change the back focus. And you can also get um, spaces which can be adjusted. So you could have two or three millimeter adjustments on this in order to tweak the back focus. And also during manufacture, sometimes these won't be exactly at the correct distance. So for example, this one here, if I measure it for you, it says it is 15.5 millimeters. So I'll take some vernier calipers. These are really useful by the way. So I'll zero the vernier calipers and then, so this should read exactly 15.5. So if I measure that, so it reads 15.49, which is incredibly accurate. So it's still slightly out. And if you were to increase that with three or four spaces, eventually that error builds up. So theoretically, although you've got exactly the right spacing, you might need to tweak it slightly as you go along. I found it quite tricky to get my head around how exactly you work out the backspacing on these devices. But the key to it is to have the sensor position in within the camera, so that distance, then the distance to your filter drawer, in my case, or the first part, and then know exactly how many spaces to get to that golden figure of 55 millimeters, or whatever the distance is that your coma corrector or your field flattener states in the instructions. And they should state that it should be whatever the distance is. Now, in my case, for these, they're all 55 millimeters. But again, sometimes they need to be tweaked in order to get them absolutely spot on. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.